to uh, do a couple of adjustments. Uh, I have a, uh, a teaching on the media and uh, why uh, the media I've always considered to be extra credit. And so uh, I'm going to uh, change that on, on, on Saturday. And uh, today I'm going to discuss uh, a topic called the room at the inn. And so uh, but before I do that, I would like to share a little bit of my testimony. And this is primarily for the young kids and the, uh, the young adults that we have uh, now uh, in the room. And uh, oftentimes when people see me, the first thing they think of is, this guy got saved in prison. <laughs> as most Christians. Uh, I actually had two parents who trained us properly. Even today, uh, my brothers and sisters are extremely very close. Okay, so I didn't come to Christianity as the alcoholic, the wife beater, the uh, drug addict, uh, you know, all of the things that most Christians do. You weren't a gang leader, huh? Uh, just a regular guy. Just an actual regular. About 25 years ago, I was preaching in Hollywood at a concert, and this young man walks up to me, and he says, you know, if my father were here, he would probably be standing with you. But you don't understand, I need to start drinking and become an alcoholic so I can get delivered and have a testimony and be born again. Let me tell you something. You may not understand this, and especially you raising your kids. Yeah. Thank God, God delivers us. Yeah. But when we have churches constantly bringing people who have this horrible testimony, it's going to affect those kids. Right. They're going to think they need that. Yeah. I am yeah. thankful you. my parents wired me. Yeah. My that good news. Right. Right. What I represent is not the prodigal son. Amen. I represent the prodigal son's brother. Amen. I didn't do a whole lot. I still need the same Savior. Yeah. And let me tell you kids something. Your parents, if they're raising you, it's for a reason. I thank God oh. that when I have pressure running my business, I don't I need a cigarette. I never bit that out. I thank God I can actually drive by a bar and not wondering, wow, wonder what they're playing. I never bit that out. I thank God I can walk by a bag of dope, not knowing whether you put it in a syringe or inhale it or smoke it. I wouldn't know what to do with this type of stuff. Come on. I thank God. I have no concept. 
set to put it this way. None! Right. I don't want the parent like that. I am thankful my parents raised me properly. Now, you young kids need to understand, when you don't bite that apple, you have no desire what it tastes like. I sit in the street with men who came from bad testimonies, and they've actually said, brother, if you don't mind, that music from that bar is a jar in my memory. Yeah. Man, when that music was going on, I was involved in, in drugs. And, yeah, I got to go. Right. Can we just move down the street? Right. I never went to this. I never bit the apple of music. I had, when I got saved, disco was dying out. I had no concept of music. I've stood in front of more concerts than more people will ever know. I don't, I don't know. I don't care about music. But when you, when you bite those apples, yeah. you're going to desire it. That's and right. understand, your parents are wiring you for a good reason. Yeah. Unfortunately, you never hear testimonies like mine. Right. And oftentimes, people just assume, just by looks, <laughs> well, this guy obviously got saved in prison. <laughs> They're, they're overbearing, be very thankful. Yeah. Even that my mother has died and gone on to be with the Lord, I still bless her name. Yeah. I still credit my parents. Amen. And so uh, you Amen. don't need a testimony. Amen. In fact, your testimony is even more powerful yeah. than that biker because you still need the same Savior. Yeah. Amen. So uh, I do encourage you kids, uh, understand, you may not understand what's going on now, but when you get older, you will thank God that yeah. your parents have born still in the That's not something that I read. That's not something that I Googled. I didn't hear this. This is first-hand testimony. Yeah. And I thank God because I didn't get involved in much of this stuff. I've seen more nudity than your purpose ever want to see. Well, I've never replayed that back in my brain. As a matter of fact, I get disgusted. I can understand why God hates sin. Most of you think you have a problem and, and God uh, despises sin. You haven't seen some of the stuff that I've been involved in and placed. Uh, some of you guys uh, get a little uh, confetti thrown on you today, some sparklers. Your name is not going to be in Fox's Book of Mars. <laughs> stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's very common in Christianity that, you know, we, I don't talk to my brother. I don't see my sister. No. My wife is always babysitting. My wife is always visiting people. Uh, when I'm out, uh, she's there at the wedding representing us. My wife is involved in all of our family affairs. She's got cards for everything. <laughs> Your cat dies. She's got a sympathy card she sends you. <laughs> That's what my wife does to still keep our family functioning. You're not going to find my wife on Facebook. Amen. You're not going to find my wife trying to clarify what I say. Amen. You're not going to find my wife has made my home into a refuge where I can swing my sword all day long, walk in that door, and place my sword down and relax. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, there's some men that have to pick their sword up and start slashing. <laughs> they can't stop that. They have to now slash their wife and their kids. I'm very thankful well, that my wife has done that. You won't see my wife. Oftentimes, she's always behind the scenes, and there's a reason for that. Uh, again, I've never been to Bible college. I've read the Bible. Uh, much like you don't find the apostles' wives. Much said. If you see how much hate mail I get on a daily basis, 
Not the uh, brother, uh, you know, he says, you come to my city, you're going home in a body bag. I know how you think. I followed you. I've watched you. I'm going to kill you. Uh, you know, you're not going to set your wife in harm's way. And so uh, at a very young age, uh, I bought life insurance for my wife. Uh, because when I die, uh, I'm not expecting an open casket. It's probably going to be something ugly. Uh, but I don't want to be dancing on the streets of gold while my wife is a basket case. And so uh, I am family oriented. I do, when I work with groups of guys, I handle things because I saw my father doing that. And so what you see with me is a lot of what I did with my parents and what they trained me. I went to public school. Hey, public school didn't teach me uh, how to sin. Uh, they, they gave you the example. They, they maybe uh, whispered in your ear. But because of my example of my parents, that, that overcame anything that I saw when I was a young man. And so that's my testimony. And so I do encourage your kids uh, to understand this. You don't need a testimony. You don't be like that kid that I saw 25 years ago, and he was serious. I need a testimony. i got to get drunk so I can get delivered. You don't need that. I am thankful to God I don't have to have that. I am thankful to God I can walk by somebody uh, smoking a cigarette, and it's not going to affect me. It's not going to trigger a memory in my mind. And it doesn't make me any better. I sin. And the proof of that is I'm going to die. That's evidence of my sin. But the difference is, uh, you know, what my parents did to me. And so I say this for the young kids. You know, I realize this is a, a, a conference for older men. But for you young kids, understand what you're doing. Understand what your father's doing. You may not know now what your mother's doing. You get to be my age, or you can be really thankful. Uh, one of the best compliments I get is when I see a cousin of mine I haven't seen in maybe 10 years, and he says, wow, you look just like your dad. It's almost kind of spooky. That's a compliment to me. And you might be embarrassed of your father. That's a compliment to me. And I hope one day I can actually emulate my father God in the house. But that's a compliment when somebody says, wow, Ruben, you said that. You know, it kind of reminded me of what your dad would say. That's a compliment. Amen. And I understand this testimony isn't very common, but it should be. Because every time you hear these testimonies of God delivering the bad guy, which is good. I'm glad we serve this God. If you don't understand, there's a lot of young kids in there, and they're thinking, I might need a testimony. What do I have to be born again about? What do I need to do? And so uh, I'm living proof that my parents uh, did a fantastic job. As a matter of fact, the uh, fruit of my parents and their Christianity is me. Amen. Uh, open air preaching is starting to really get a lot of momentum. Right. And so uh, there are, when I first started, uh, you know, there was just a handful of us, and we'd communicate right. maybe with a phone call, maybe with a letter. But thanks to uh, the internet, it's growing real big. Yes. And because it's growing real big, I need to say this. I need to get in this type of a teaching. This is not a Bible breakthrough. Okay? This is not something biblical breakthrough here. It's just common Christianity. Yeah. One day when I'm old, and maybe I'll write a book. And if I do write a book, one chapter in that book is going to be on hospitality and abusing hospitality. Mom. And that's what I'd like to address now. Abusing a hospitality. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, when you go into a city, you find who's working. And that person you stay with. Generally, when I used to travel across the country at a young age, we would contact churches before I even get a hotel to find out who's worthy. I mean, you don't have to stand with me to get abused. You can just give me a drink of water. You get the same reward that I'm doing when I'm getting yeah. abused by just giving me a glass of water. Yeah, man. 
So when guys like us pull into town, uh, we're looking for a place to stay. We're looking for somebody. My house is a revolving door of open air preachers. I got guys coming in all the time, just even wanting to find out how I live. Wow, this is your computer? This is your office? <laughs> matters. I don't care who's. You need to be in Orange County. Yeah. 
And why is it so vague that you know or don't even know what God says? Yeah, right. If it's truly of God, God's very precise. Right. I'm sure glad John in the book of Revelation didn't say, you know, it kind of resembled it. It could have been that. But, you know, it might have been uh, this over here. It kind of looked like this. No! John knew exactly what to do. Yeah. Men of God in the Bible knew exactly where to go. They knew exactly where to stand. They knew exactly what their message is supposed to be. You don't just show up, lick your lips to your finger and say, okay, Lord, now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> Staying at somebody's house. I wish I can say, live like it's your house. But I don't know how some of you live. Come on, man. Come on. I can't say it. Yeah. Once again, this isn't Bible breakthrough, people. Just Christian courtesy. That's right. uh, we were at a church in Philadelphia that housed us. You know, it housed us. Well, I'm in bed, or actually on the pew, sleeping, and the brother wakes me up. We got a mess downstairs. And uh, what happened? Somebody dropped coffee all over the floor, and it's there. Nobody done nothing. Uh, guys, you know, this is not, uh, you know, it's not think a genius to figure this stuff out. Uh, uh, this is vital. You know, I mean, uh, there are young men that I preach with, and I'm a little bit like their father. Uh, God, if your room isn't clean, you're not going to preach it. You know, they come into the house, and there's like a, a trail of stuff. They throw their, shoe, their shirt, their shoes or someplace, their body. And uh, this shouldn't be. We're guests. Yeah. We are guests there. That's right. The Bible says, well, this is a field manual. Whatever they place before you, you eat. Yeah. That's fine. That's right. Okay, you don't say, I, I can't eat. Yeah. Right. Uh, he had his first potato chip with 
Some of you, like I said, may not understand this concept because you may not take in uh, preachers. Uh, there's times uh, we have bodies all over our living room, dining room. It looks like Jonestown. I enjoy that. I enjoy working with a group of guys. I enjoy having to, uh, you know, scold them, yeah. uh, remind them to inhale and exhale every once in a while. And, and again, you have to, when you open up your home, you know, guys will destroy stuff. People have left my house with broken doors, a broken Amen. shower, uh, things uh, messed up, without saying something. Yeah. Guys, we're guests. Amen. We are guests. Uh, we have this incredible invention. It's called a hinge. Right. There's some people that are just anti-hinge. Every door they open, every cabinet they open, whatever they have, they just leave wide open. One gal, one time we were in this house and, and this guy was in the kitchen. Everything in the kitchen was open. And the wine, you know, we're in the dining room and he now gets involved in the conversation in the dining room. Everything's open like a bomb explodes. says nothing. Yeah. It is not beneath me to bring some work clothes since I own a painting business and a painted bathroom for our host. It's not beneath me to paint the living room, to paint the church. I'll stay a few extra days. It's not beneath me to do that. And if you're a plumber, electrician, roofer, uh, it may not be beneath you to maybe stay an extra day and do something. If you're a computer nerd, uh, you know, ask them, hey, uh, sister, can I help maybe do a family blog for you? Maybe actually do something constructive rather than taking advantage of your host. Right. Yeah. I understand. Right. I understand. We put people up and, uh, you know, we stay at their homes. And, and when I travel, like I said, it's not just me. I usually work with uh, an entourage. I have 8 to 12 to 15 people they got to put up. Oh. And families will actually bring in all their kids and sleep with mom and dad so we can have beds and sofas and floors. Right. They'll put their children out someplace else so we can have. They do work around to have us in a place to stay. <laughs> and so uh, we are obligated to at least clean the room, keep it clean, pick up the dishes, yeah. uh, wash the dishes. Yeah. It doesn't take a genius to do this. Yeah, right. The Bible says, uh, let all things be done indecently and in order. That's what the Bible says. When I was a very young man, that Bible verse inspired me. You come to my house, some people think, did you just move here? Uh, we've been there for 28 years. We're not a very cluttery people. Right. I run my business that way. My work van is probably cleaner than most of your homes and your cars. Because that verse inspired me. I'm not a guy that when I'm done with a tool, I just toss it in the van. It goes back where it's supposed Amen. to go. Amen. 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 Where it is. Amen. Nothing complicated. The verse was there, and I read it like all things. All things mean everything. The guy that you see before you now is the same guy at 3 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't change. It's yep. the same. Yep. Because that verse inspired me. We do the same thing in our homes. And so when we stay with somebody, I make sure the, you know, the beds are made. Even though we're going to sleep on there again. Uh, 
things are put away. If we're all sleeping inside the living room, we stuff everything inside of a bedroom so they can actually have uh, the living room when we're gone preaching. When I'm there, I'm not staying in somebody's house all day long. There's a young guy that one time he stayed at our house and he was spending more time on the computer inside the room. I have a rule. You want to stay with me. When I leave for work, you're out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. When I come back, give me at least a half hour, 45 minutes with my wife, and then you can return. Come on. That's the rule. And uh, you can't just hang around. There's a difference between uh, being a ho-ho and actually staying at somebody's house. <laughs> right? Yeah. Amen. Right. Right. Not Bible breaker. Amen. Just Christian courtesy. Yeah. That's so, right. I mean, uh, you'll be surprised. My wife has a tendency to uh, call uh, gals who have put us up. And that's a big thing for a wife to get a phone call from my wife, Colleen. Thank you for what you've done for my husband. Thank you for feeding him. Thank you for taking care of him. And oftentimes, these wives that my wife is, is calling about, they, they talk. Yes, we had, we had some other guys. Oh, they left the house a mess. Oh, they do not, and rightly so. Sure. And Colleen tells me, and I make sure if they're working with me, they don't do that. Right. There are people that will come into a house. Brother, I don't think I can stay here. There's a cat that lives here. There's cat for all. try uh, to do this. This isn't just an idea. Uh, you, you, you live it this way. You clean up, you make sure that the gates are closed, that the lights are off, and so this is the way we should be living. Amen. Oftentimes, when you go to somebody's home, you uh, you might hear what I hear. Hey, brother, we're going to come to your house. When are you going to come? Wednesday. No, maybe Thursday. No, it could be Friday. No, we might get there on Saturday. I just don't know. When you when, when you know, call me. Uh, well, how long are you going to stay? Well, I don't know. It depends when the Lord wants me to. Uh, that doesn't work with me. You know, again, uh, uh, it doesn't. When, I, when the host puts us up, they know when we're coming in and when we're leaving. Amen. And I run a business that way. Amen. I can tell a customer, we're going to start you on this date, and we're going to be done at this date, and I can pretty much tell them what time we're going to be done. Well, Stick to that. Don't just simply say, well, it's however the Lord leaves. <laughs> I've had people come to our house with dirty laundry. Here, brother, can you take care of that? Here, brother. And there's no conscience about it. There's times when we're preaching for two weeks in a particular period of time. We actually make one day to go do the laundry. It's not beneath us for men to go inside a laundromat where we can handle it within an hour and a half instead of all day long with the dirty clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Again, not Bible breaking, right. just Christian courtesy. Amen. If your car leaks oil, yeah. don't park your car in the driveway. Come on now. Amen. It doesn't, it's not a genius. <laughs> you should know your car. I know my vehicles. It's like your wife. You ought to know what she likes and what she doesn't like. If your car's leaking oil, you ought to know it. If you don't want to fix it, at least have the courtesy not to pull in somebody's uh, driveway. Right. Like the Beverly Hillbillies or something with stuff leaking all over the place. <laughs> Bible, right? 
It's just Christian. <laughs> when we stay at somebody's home, uh, we a floor is fine. I don't need a bed. In fact, nothing personal. I'm not there to be entertained. Right. I'm in town for business. Yeah. When I was a young man and I, and I read the Bible, uh, you know, because I didn't have uh, the testimony, I read, I was inspired, and went out and did. As a young man, I read where Jesus said he was about his father's business when he was, when he was a child. Yeah. I'm about my father's business. And, and I took that, and I'm wired with that. And so when I go preaching, uh, I don't need to be wine and dying. Out of all the times I've traveled across this country, I never sightsee. I don't go to museums. I'm in for business. I'm very, very involved in business. Like a businessman from Los Angeles that flies to New York, don't wind me, don't dine me, keep me in a conference room. I'm not leaving until that contract is signed. Let's hammer down the details. Let's get it signed. I'll take a red eye and go back home. That's the way I think. Point A, point B, doesn't matter if two brothers are over here and they're right at you, stop by and see me, because I'm not busy. It's business time. I'm in there for business. Take care of business. For those of you that have never preached with me, you can ask some of the brothers that have gone out with me. It's like business. This is what's expected of you. This is what we need to do. You're about the Father's business. So uh, I don't call my wife and say, Hi, honey, I'm at the museum here. I wish you were here. Yeah. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to sit down and have a decent meal. It's just business. To go to a place like we've been doing for the past couple of days, that's, that's unique. Uh, but uh, normally, uh, we're not there but for business. I take care of business. I'm a regular guy, watering my yard, my neighbors on vacation, we, we feed their dogs, pick up their mail. But when God wants me to go deliver a message, I know where to go, I expect it, certain things to happen, and it happens. I go, and then I get back home, hopefully with my fingers and toes. Uh, when I'm gone, I don't call my wife on the phone, you won't see me on the phone. Hi, honey, wish you were here. Uh, no, uh, I normally call my wife at night before I go to bed, and uh, then she knows that I'm safe, and we're gone. That's the way I've always lived. As a matter of fact, that's how I met uh, Brother Dick. I was uh, working one day, and this is when uh, Boston was considering same-sex marriage. The first time our country was going to even take it before the courts. And I'm at work, I get a phone call, it's Brother Gillis. Brother Gillis says, uh, hey brother, I think we might need you here in Boston. Okay. Got home from work, my wife's making dinner. Forget dinner, Colleen. I gotta get on the uh, computer, I gotta catch a flight. I'm going to Boston. Uh, Colleen, she, she lives with this, this is normal. Yeah. I mean, our honeymoon, I'm preaching. That's the world of a street preacher. You marry me, I'm taking my banner with me to the honeymoon. <laughs> Says uh, Reuben, I can't have 
Too much, uh, too much noise. I'm getting too much, uh, too many problems just with you and my church. Oh, wow. <clears throat> it's not a problem. Okay, thanks for the time that you did. Appreciate that. I got the phone. I turned to the guys and I said, "We'll be sleeping in a park tonight." That banner, you throw it on the floor on that wet grass, and it's a nice mattress. Amen. I'm not there to be wine and dine, guys. My whole purpose is to get in that city and preach. So we slept in the park. Well, we brushed our teeth outside with some water we found. <laughs> when I'm concerned about whining and dying, hey, it's not the end of the world. So yeah. when I hear some of you got it out, brother, you're like, I had to sleep. I slept in hotels where it's so horrible, the only thing that's lacking is a chalk line of a body on the floor. somebody's house, you do actually clean up. Right. You do. If you break something, Google if you don't know how to fix it. You can fix it with Google. Get a couple of tools. At least tell them about it. Get a channel and some uh, duct tape. Do something. If you're a man, for crying out loud. If you break something, learn to fix it, or at least have the decency to fess up and say, I'm sorry, I busted this. Can I at least pay for it? Amen. Can I at least do something? Yeah. Can I at least help somewhere? Yeah. Come on. So imagine how we can tell people about uh, eternal life. And we got to remind these guys to inhale and exhale. Yeah. But again, I, I enjoy doing that. And, and we even find that in the Bible. If you think that you can preach with a group of men for a few weeks, and not have problems, but you live in the fantasy world. <laughs> the issue is, how are you going to resolve these problems? Right, right. Even within the apostles, you had 12 disciples walking with Jesus, and he hears a little more commotion going on back there. Fellas, it's a problem. Yeah. Who's the greatest among them? Oh. That's the problem. Yeah. Even with the 12 disciples. Yeah. Right. In fact, at one point, they even got mom involved. They're arguing their behalf. <laughs> if it happened to them, it's going to happen to you if you work with a group of gods. And you need to understand, if God has raised you up to have, be some leader with these guys, you better understand that's going to happen. You better start learning how to solve these problems. And again, uh, I didn't go to school to learn how to do this. My father was an example. But my dad used to sit us at the table. I got Got the light bill today, kids. Light bill. It's uh, six dollars more than it was last month. You kids need to start shutting off those lights when you leave the room. Amen. That's what my dad did. That's how I grew up. So that's why it's very easy for me to do what you see. Yep. But if you wish to be a leader, let me tell you, stay, you stay in somebody's home and they damage that house, it's your name. That's right. Amen. So right. you need to actually be responsible for it. Right. You need That's to actually right. make sure that they're doing their job. Right. Clean me up. Right. We shouldn't be a burden. Right. Yeah. Amen. The field Amen. manual talks about when you go into a home, you say, peace be in that house. Peace. Right. Hey, it doesn't mean a Joel Osteen peace where yeah. prosperity is going to come and you should have a Cadillac out there. Understand, when these boys in the Bible actually were in town, riots happened. Right. Right. There were some problems going on. We got a man in the book of Acts named Jason where his house was rampaged because he was housing those guys. Right. Uh, you had a man in the, book, in the book of Acts who was in prison and an earthquake happened and he walked out. Now he's at somebody's house. Because we caused a lot of problem. We were just in the news, just at a college campus. Let alone if there was an actual event and they 
they showed our faces. Wives get a little nervous. Hey, a brick through the window, some pop tires, you know, the reality of who we are. So when the disciples walked in and they said, peace, you know, there's a lot of chaos that they caused in the street. And there could be some wives. I don't think we need these guys in there. Uh, Reuben, boy, had his, his reputation. You know, he, he's got a pig head. He's, uh, he wears a cow costume when he preaches the Hindus. He breaks to the Virgin Mary. Uh, you know, he, he has a, a bloody cortex when he's talking about the bloody rags. Do we really want him? That's the piece that we're told to do when we walk into a house. Right. We're obligated. So don't just walk in and take advantage of your host. Right. Amen. That's that house. Amen, brother. Right. You need to bless that house. Amen. Because yeah. there could be a little bit of chaos when you do leave. Yeah. Well, neighbors aren't going to talk to me anymore. And I remember a pastor said, uh, brother, when you come to our church, uh, could you maybe not be preaching? And he took me in his office, and uh, there I listened to the messages that he had on his phone. Uh, you are taking care of those guys with the sign. We're burning your church down. We're going to do this, uh, which is why if you ever read my weekly blog, I rarely put a church address that's worked with us. Right. Because I don't want you to get what I get right. on, a, on a daily basis. Right. And so some of these people, one day they're going to hit jackpot. One day they're going to get, and like I said, uh, our future is not an open casket, guys. That's the reality. So uh, today, if you got glitter thrown on you, you got kicked, you got slapped, you're not going to get a group hug from Uncle Ruby. Yeah. If anything, <laughs> I'm going to remind you, walk it off yeah. and learn to take it. You're not, your name is not going to be submitted to Fox's Book of Marks. Hey. <laughs> right. So let's just see how much you take by tonight when you leave, if you can clean up your area. Well, now, somebody obviously is doing it. It's not a tooth fairy that comes in and cleans and sleep. Somebody here is doing this. Amen. So when you leave, before you get in this incredible conversation with somebody, just pick up your mess. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not a Bible breakthrough. Right. Just understood the curse. Amen. Amen.